So really excited to be here. Um, it is always really, really hard to follow Leah Pika. She is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of your of hers. So if you haven't watched her presentation, um, just go back and if you're able to and see if you can find that. And um, you can figure that out. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in of how to know exactly where to optimize in using Google Analytics for. So before we go ahead and dive in, we have a question we want to go through is, can you guess the number one question measurement marketers are asked? I wanna give you just a moment and you can go ahead and put it in the chat. And then you can also go ahead and someone said the audio, good. Um, so here's a little hint for you. Uh, audio it, seems it, fine uh, uh, on our side. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, all right, so this is a question every single business will ask. So not just online businesses, it's going to be something that technically every, even brick and mortar business will ask. So very good. If, if you wanna have a few more seconds to put in there. So what is something every single marketer will ask? Every single time we are always asked, what is working and what is not? They're frustrated, they don't know what what's working so yes we have some questions in the or the question suggestions in the chat like where you know what how where are my leads coming from and all of those iterations is leading to this very specific question and that is exactly what it is what's working and what's not and why is this so hard to answer and the reason it's so hard to answer is because they don't have a measurement marketing framework to guide them. So we're going to walk you through a like 100,000 foot view level of what this measure marketing framework is and then how does that apply to Google Analytics for so you can optimize. Well, Julie, you should you be able to share video now. <sighs> Yay. <laughs> All right. You guys see me now? Are you good? Zoom is not showing me squat, so I assume we're good. Uh, we can see you. Uh, at, we can see you uh, on, on video, and we can see your screen. And uh, nice, thanks, uh, guys. Okay, uh, <laughs> yay, uh, technology. Yeah, for me, oh. I can I can hear you. I think that some people um, have a slight like lag, but but from what I can hear, it seems uh, seems are working good. So, okay, perfect. Thanks, guys, for being patient with us. Um, technology is always fun. Um, but you guys get to see kind of the behind the scenes of what this is actually involved. So we have our measurement marketing framework. And here we have three different steps to the framework. We have our plan, our build, and our launch. And what we're trying to do is go from marketing in the blind. That's where we're marketing where it's chaotic and not sure what's working, what's not, that main question we're always asking. And you, you're trying stuff and you're just kind of guessing. You're kind of a fish out of water, just flopping around and not sure what's going to happen next. So where you want to go is to be able to market where you're reliably growing those revenue and profits. You want to say, if I change this, then this will happen. You know what's going to do, what it's going to do. You're able to forecast. You're able to optimize efficiently. That's where we want to take you. And to do that, you go through the framework and you, for the first step has question, information, and action. Very simply, that's understanding what questions you need to be able to answer, what questions you have. Kind of heard that a little bit in Leah Pika's presentation of knowing exactly what it is you need to answer. Um, then you need the information. What information are you going to need to get to answer those questions? And then finally, another big uh, thing that you're going to be learning about a lot today is action, understanding the actions that you're able to take with that information from those questions. Um, and so this is usually the missing piece for so many marketers. It's like they just dive into what's already being given to them in different platforms, and they're just trying to figure out like to make sense of it instead of planning it out and building a system that's going to answer their questions um, and for what they need. So going on, we have our results, our traffic, and our storage. You, so you need to understand the results and you need to know the traffic that's causing those results. And then you also need to know what the story is. Again, you heard that a lot in Leah's presentation as well. And you'll be hearing it a lot more today, I'm sure. And then finally go to listen, Long, or listen, forecast, and optimize in your launch steps. So what this means is you're listening to the story. You're understanding what the story is telling you. 
so that you can forecast and optimize. And you're going to go through this framework over and over and over. You have a new funnel. You're going to go, you know, go through this framework again. You have a, a new client. You're going to go through this framework several times with that client. And this is just a structure, a framework, so you can go from marketing the blind to reliably growing those revenue and profits. And no more guessing with there. So we're going to mainly focus on this section right here, the results. And so that way we can dive in a little bit more here. So we have the results, traffic, and story of part of our build step. And we're going to be focusing on this little concept we call ACE, A-C-E. So let's dive into the ACE method. And so here's just a quick example, something we're really um not the word famous for, but this is we're really well known for our eyes on the journey method, which is just kind of diving deep into a certain portion of the user journey and kind of just dissecting it to see where users might be getting stuck with. And so this is just a little example. We'll show you a little bit more about that in a little bit, but we're going to kind of take a high level approach of this with ACE. So first thing is how many users are aware of the journey? How many users completed the journey. So we have our A for aware, C for completed, and then E for engaged. And how many users engaged along the way? Then we have a very simple, this one's a little bit more familiar for most of you. If you don't have any sort of extra um, uh, measurement set up inside of maybe Tag Manager or whatever platform you're using. So we have A, so again, how many users are aware of the journey? how many users completed the journey, and then how many users engaged along the way. And so for this instance right here, without using any Google Tag Manager, you are able to say, well, they are aware of the journey, meaning they've probably started the journey and they saw an offer page, then they completed the journey. In this particular instance, they made a purchase, and then how many users engaged along the way? That means they did something in between. And again, without even using Google Tag Manager, we're able to see that they were able at the cart page. And so you could absolutely do this exact same thing with opt-ins, with blogs, and with all these other different types of sites, e-commerce, um, business, uh, B2B type stuff. And you're able to kind of see where the user is possibly getting stuck in their journey, not converting the way you're expecting them to, um, or possibly where everything is working. You just need to increase the traffic to it. So it keeps working. So here is a quick example of what you might have seen if you were inside of Universal Analytics, again, uh, where you have your goals. So you are able to kind of look at those goals and kind of very easily see um, what your traffic sources or landing pages, which one were accomplishing these goals. And most of you might already know that Google Analytics 4 doesn't have goals anymore. They have something called conversions and you're able to use the events and turn them into conversions. And so we'll walk through this in actual real time in our own uh, GA4. Just want to kind of give you some quick screenshots of kind of what it looks like a little bit so you can have that. And so again, we have our Academy Aware, Academy Engaged, and Academy Complete. So the reason we have the word Academy here is because that's the product and we're grouping them all together. And we have another product that's called like Toolbox Aware, Toolbox Engaged, Toolbox Complete. So it kind of very easily um, groups them together. Um, so we're able to see the story and see exactly what each one of these are doing. So then again, we come into looking at the traffic sources inside of Google Analytics 4. And you're able to, again, choose which one it is you're looking for. So that, what was that question that we wanted to be able to answer? What's working, what's not? If you are trying to find out which traffic source is getting them aware, you can do that inside of your Google Analytics 4 no tag manager required so that you can quickly answer those questions. So if you're a an agency or you have a new client that's just not quite ready for tag manager, or you want to get them really quick wins, this ACE result method is amazing to do that because you very quickly, you don't need tag manager to get that set up just yet. And we'll show you exactly how to do that. You could do that in a matter of minutes. And so we'll walk through that here in just a moment, but I just want to show you how simple and easy it is. And we're also going to have some little cheat sheets for you at the very end. So again, you can see dive in, and you can see the number of conversions as we go through and change. Um, and so you can very quickly see exactly what's working, what's not. So let's go ahead and dive in to actual Google Analytics 4. So 
you might know, Measure Marketing Data, we do a lot of teaching. So we do a lot of plugging stuff in and unplugging it, plugging stuff in and unplugging it, um, and lots of demonstrations and tests and stuff like that. So you're going to see a lot of extra stuff in hours. Don't worry about that. Um, this is exactly what it is like for having that type of instructional type of business. So, but we're going to focus on these guys right here. So we have our Academy where complete engage. And we, the way we got here is by configure and by default, we start here with our events. And so I want to scroll down real quick, just to show you the reason why, again, we have everything that is by the product name, and then we have a where complete engage is because down here we have another product called Toolbox. This is our free membership. So you can have Toolbox Aware, Toolbox Complete, and then Toolbox Engage. So they were aware of the product. They engaged along the way and then they completed their journey. So it's easy to see them grouped together. And we'll kind of see that as we go through. So how do you do this, especially without using Tag Manager? Um, and just a real quick side note, for those of you that are Tag, Man Tag Manager enthusiasts, which I am, our team, like it's Tag Manager is a priority for all of our clients. And we don't have any clients that don't use Tag Manager. We always encourage it, but we totally understand that sometimes your client might not be ready to use it, or maybe you're learning still and you need something to kind of get you going before you actually dive in there. So we still recommend you go the Tag Manager route, but this is to get you really quick win. So we're gonna choose create an event. If you have extra data streams, you'll just choose the one you want. Um, you probably won't have anything here. So we're gonna just choose create. And what you're going to do is you're going to choose this, you're gonna have this already uh, chosen for event name, but what we need to choose here is contains. And then we're gonna choose the word page and then we're gonna do underscore view. So what this is, and I really feel Google has misnamed this because it's not really a parameter. It's just kind of, it's a little bit confusing. So what you're saying is, I need you to go look when there's an event name that contains page view. So what does that mean? So if we actually come over here and I'm gonna duplicate this super fast. So remember we're in the configuration, we're under events. So this is event name. And so what we need to do, because you're not gonna have these here and what you're going to do is look at say when there's a page view, because this is the way we're getting by without having to use tag manager, when there's an event name that contains page view, I'm going to need you, then this is where you really do have a parameter. I need you to go to the parameter that is automatically going through called page location. So again, go look when there's a page view, then go look at that parameter that automatically comes in and I need it to contain, and then this is whatever value it is. So we can go into our measurement marketing.io, and we're gonna just go very quickly, exactly the same way you would do it. And at this I'm showing you how simple this would be for you. I'm just gonna grab the portion of the URL that I want to use. You might have to use a different portion, just kind of note what it is for you. And then we're gonna go ahead and paste that in there. So then we're going to say, we're gonna call this GA forward underscore academy underscore aware. So that way it's not mixed up with our actual academy aware. And that is what we do to set that up. We're going to go ahead and create. And then we're going to use a handy dandy little trick that we're going to have. And we're going to say copy. And so now we see the words copy of, we go ahead and get rid of that and say engage. So what it is, what is it that we want to use for them to engage along the way? Again, if we're not using Google Tag Manager, we're gonna go ahead and go all the way down here and we're gonna choose whichever one. And they are changing the page literally this moment. Why are they doing that right now? So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab whatever form that I might want to use, whatever point that might indicate what it is that we're looking for. So for engage, let's say they see the cart and we could go ahead and do that. And again, we create. And so we're a matter of minutes in here. And we already have two events that are going to say they're aware of the journey and then they are engaging with the journey. And then we're gonna go ahead and again, choose to copy because that's pulling all the stuff in that we already need, that's perfect. And then again, the last little part is going to be complete. Because we really wanna be able to see if they're completing their journey. And then we're just going to say, maybe it's TY slash 
Academy. So there we go. So guess what? In a matter of minutes, you have just set up the entire ACE method for a funnel. And it's very simple, very easy. And you did not need Google Tag Manager to be able to answer the question, what's working, what's not. So, but little side note, you will be able to answer more questions if you do uh, level up your measurement to use Tag Manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop out. And if we go down into our list, we actually won't see anything here until it starts actually having traffic or having counts or whatever it is that you're gonna have here. Um, so you can definitely see that we do a lot of little testing inside here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use these as our examples as we go through the rest of Google Analytics 4 to kind of show you how you're going to use them so you can answer the question, what's working, what's not, and to be able to optimize and understand how your users are going through your journey using your ACE method. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pop over and a real quick side note, we are using Google Tag Manager to send these through. And I'll show you that here in a minute. All right. So we're coming, that was the other one, that's the one, here we are. So we are actually in the lifecycle collection under acquisition and under traffic acquisition. So um, we could go over here to default channel group. It's kind of not really very helpful. So what we're gonna choose is actually session source medium, which would be the kind of that last click attribution that you're looking for. Usually you're trying to find out if they're taking an action in a very specific session like are they completing are they converting in that session so this is usually the one that you're going to want to use session source medium and we already have it set up here to look at event count of academy aware normally it would be default to all events but i had it already set up for this presentation uh, for the academy aware and so we're able to very quickly and easily see here inside of google analytics for what exactly is it doing obviously you can use um, a data storytelling tool like Looker Studio or any other platform to make this organize and look pretty, but you're able to help quickly get understanding of what is happening on your user journey by using the ACE results inside here. So we're gonna just kind of go through, it's like, okay, which one is getting them engaged? And this is where you could possibly see like, oh, um, YouTube is great at getting them aware, but not so great at completing them. Or um, Google Organic is okay at getting them aware. So you could go through all of these to be able to kind of understand what it is that they're doing. And um, for Academy Complete, we're gonna say like, it makes sense that our Infusionsoft email is good at getting them to actually complete. However, um, it is interesting that's a direct none, meaning there's untagged traffic, or um, Google Organic is also doing basically the exact same thing. And I believe it's just because of our, our website name and our brand name are basically the one and the same. It's always measurementmarketing.io. So we get a lot of direct non traffic and organic traffic because of that, because of the speaking and the podcast and all those things. So for us, it is actually quite normal to have these uh, two sources um, be actually uh, convert a lot higher than normal. So that's kind of normal for us. And so this is where we're able to kind of go through and see. Um, and when we're running traffic and paid traffic, we're able to kind of uh, guide our marketing team to know like, okay, if they're supposed to, if that's supposed to get them aware um, and it's not, we're able to really quickly be able to see that and guide them to adjust the ads or possibly adjust the page. Um, going over to another section in Google Analytics 4, we're now in, under engagement, pages and screens, really freaking useless, all of this. Um, I really hate this. So what we can do is if you don't already know, you can customize your report and then you can come into your dimensions here and you can choose to add a dimension. You can possibly do want to do landing page or if you want to do page location, remember that's the one we kind of used um, before when we were setting up our ACE results. And so we're gonna go ahead and press apply. And then we can actually choose to save as well. And we can choose to save as a new report or current report. Um, just a quick side note, if you save as a current report, it is going to replace whatever report it is. So like right now we're at pages and screens on this other tab here. So what you're going to, um, you would do is you would replace this here for everybody. So every account that has access to this here, um, you would change it. So if it's not your own personal business or it's not your department and no one else is in there, 
I would recommend save as a new report. And so we're just going to say GA forward, just to have that there, we're gonna save. And it's going to feel like it goes nowhere. We're gonna press back and we're gonna go back to reports. It's kind of like, where the heck are we? We're gonna go into our reports and it's going to, we're gonna look under a gauge. We know it's not here because we did not, we chose not to override it where it actually ended up is here in your library. And I'm showing you this only because this was kind of a pain to actually figure out on our own. Um, and so when we create that report and we have it right here, and what we can do is we can create a new collection. Technically, we've already maxed out, um, again, because we like to teach and show these things um, and everything else that we have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you something that I did very recently. Um, where we have this UA report. I recreated the universal analytics reports um, and I was able to uh, create a collection of those. I'll just show you that. So we'll show you that here in just a second, but you can go through and edit your collection and then we can choose to grab that and add that to our collection. So we're gonna choose that here and we're gonna grab it there and we're gonna save and save to current collection. So this isn't really part of my presentation, but I just wanted to show you the, what cool things are possible. So you can come back and save those reports and organize them in the way that you want to, so you can get the answers that you need to take the action faster, because it is kind of a pain where you have to go through here and you can't get your answers fast enough because you have this and you don't want to maybe change your client's default view. Uh, or be other vendors that are, might be in here looking for something. So you can create your own collection for your own team um, and, be, or ha and have that. So here we have our old UA reports. And so we've recreated those. So this is just kind of a report that has source medium. And if we wanna have landing page, we can grab that. And again, just come over here with our source medium. And we've already done that previously. So we're not gonna do that, but we're gonna try landing page now. And then go ahead and go through. Um, and again, we can just choose what events that we want to look at for the landing page. What page is it that they're starting on um, for those that actually come, you know, have this event? So we have an event count technically. Um, and so we have all of these. And we're able to see if we wanted to sort by this, we would be able to do that as well. So if you have the question of, oh, for those that complete the academy, especially for those of you that might be uh, a B2B or content marketer, and you're trying to figure out, well, what page do they, when they start on, are they eventually converting? You know, what is a great one to start with? And so this is going to be able to help you answer that question to know exactly what is the page that they start on and then complete. Then same thing with all pages. Again, we're recreating these universal analytics reports because everyone's like, well, I need those reports back. And so you'd be able to do that as well. Same thing with e-commerce. And then here's our handy dandy little report that we recreated here as well, if we wanted to be able to do that. So if we have our page location, we have that here. So those are just some fun little tips for you so that you can get to your answers faster than ever before. Now, one little side note, once you do have your uh, actual events figured out and you start seeing them um, with traffic come through, you'll want to go to conversions and then you'll want to make sure they mark them as a conversion. The reason why is because obviously Google Analytics 4 and Google Ads are going to do some fun, special things. You'll be able to utilize them, algorithms, all of those things. Um, there's also some special reports inside of Google Analytics 4 that's going to acknowledge them um, and be able to kind of give you more insights if they're marked as a conversion. So if you need them to be marked as a conversion, absolutely go ahead and do that. Um, if you maybe, let's say you have a launch at midnight and you don't feel like staying up to mark it as a conversion, you actually can come in here and you know what, I'm gonna show you exactly what I do. So we're gonna go back to events. These are all little fun pro tips I'm throwing at you. Um, so if we're going to go ahead and create our event, even though we're not actually truly creating it, we're creating an event, we're going back to our data stream and we're coming in here to where we just were. I'm going to copy this name, and just control C, so copy, that's all we're doing. And then we're gonna back it back out. And then we're going to our conversions. 
we're going to create a new conversion event and we're pasting. The reason we're pasting is because all things Google Analytics 4 is extremely case sensitive. So if I did GA forward, this would not work. It would never have any sort of conversions. But if I do this right here, it's going to automatically mark it as a conversion because I cr created a new conversion event. So that way, I don't have to stay up till midnight to go ahead and turn this on as a conversion. I am forcing it to be a conversion here. And if I wanted to do well, where and we have all of that. We could do the exact same thing for all three of them. No matter what, we can go ahead and mark those as a conversion. And there. And so now the team is going to be wondering, what the heck am I doing? But there we go. We have these conversions here as well. Um, so that's how we go ahead and mark those so we can utilize the other things inside of Google Analytics for utilize the reports that they have, um, utilize some different algorithms and stuff that Google Analytics or Google Ads will have for the conversions. Um, and we don't have to wait for them to have traffic to flip the switch. And it really is that freaking simple to flip the switch. And then I can come back over here to my events. And then I can flip that switch back on and we're good to go. It's literally that simple and easy. So it's a phenomenally easier than what we used to have to deal with universal analytics. All right, let's continue on. We've got a few more things we want to go ahead and go through. We already mentioned that. I had all my little fun screens ready to show you. So the other thing that you can do, which is really, really cool, is inside of your explorations, you can utilize your ACE results. Super, super simple. So I'm just going to kind of let you grab this. If you want to grab a screenshot, grab it now. Um, but we have a the standard funnel. We're just grabbing event name. And because we li usually like to be able to see the session source and session medium, we're going to show you how to break it down by those. But your steps, look at this. This is all it is. Literally, all we had to do is click on Academy Aware, Academy Engaged, Academy Complete, Done. Literally, that's it. Then we name it. And by the way, pro tip for you, if you're using explorations, just change the name to have the forecast with you because you always need to be able to have a forecast. So it's kind of like one of those data storytelling tips that I'm sure you guys have heard before is if you don't have what it is you're aiming at, you don't know if something's good or bad. You don't, you don't have context. So, you know, a conversion rate to the um, cart page at, you know, 1%, you're like, hey, that's awesome. But if you don't know that it, in this particular situation, you really need it to be 8 to 12, then you have the context to know like, oh, crap, 1%, not, that's not good. We need to fix something. So coming back here um, in this particular date range on this particular funnel, we're able to see very quickly what is going on. So 100% of the users for step one, that's always going to be step one's always going to be 100%. But then getting the two step two, the overall users is 3.97. And then getting to complete in this very unique situation is getting is actually a 0.24 of the overall numbers percent of step one. So this is good, just getting yourself familiar with how this particular tool works. If you're not quite ready for Looker Studio or another dashboardings tool, you can definitely dive into here. And then here is what's going to tell you like the difference between the um, the previous step or this step here. So how many people completed this engaged and went on to the complete. And then that is this right here is 5.97. So four over, you know, divide by these two numbers together, the conversion rate of the cart or the engage step is 5.97. So it's nice that it has both versions for you because um, depending on your client, they might be used to um, looking at this number instead of this. So it just kind of depends on what it is you need and they're both right here. So it's just really nice. Um, and then finally, we can break it down by source if we wanted to. And so again, being able to answer that question, what's working, what's not, so that we can kind of figure out what we want to do next. And so look right here, YouTube, their completion rate is basically half of what it is that we're expecting um, or what the other traffic sources are doing to direct and Google, which is likely Google organic are actually completing a lot higher, but still not where we want. So we would be able to go to the marketing team um, and help them adjust their messages or, you know, set the expectations or change where we're sending the YouTube traffic um, or stuff like that. So that's how we're able to very quickly and easily see what's working, what's not, and how we could be able to optimize. So as I mentioned, we actually set up 
our uh, ACE results. So our aware, complete, and engage inside of Google Tag Manager. I want to show you that real quick, just because I know there's going to be some Tag Manager fans in here, and you want, might want to see exactly what we did and how ours is actually slightly different than what we did in the very first steps. So when coming into Tag Manager, and I'm just showing you real quick, and I'm not going to dive into how we did it. I just want you to get an idea. It's like it's insanely simple. So we have our configuration tag, um, and then we have the event name, and then we have a trigger. And this one, we did decide to do something that's slightly different than an actual page view. We want to know if they're on the page for about 10 seconds because it kind of means that they're not um, bouncing out or possibly people logging in um, and stuff like that. So that's when we have there. And then engaged is. Uh, simply looking at the cart and but they are on the cart for about five seconds. So again, um, they're not just jumping to the cart and bouncing right away. We want to understand that. And then finally, complete is them actually going through and making a purchase uh, for that. And so we have those are our ACE results inside of Google uh, Tag Manager and how we set it up. And so um, it's like we're able to get a little bit more defined narrower answers inside a tag manager. We're able to do a little bit more. We're able to answer a little bit more bigger and better questions. Um, so I highly encourage you to look into tag manager if you're not quite there yet. Um, and so just something kind of keep in the back of your head if you're not using tag manager already. Then um, I want to show you again what it is. And so because of amazing Looker Studio and this Google Analytics 4 quota issue, I'm only able to show like a day of data, but um, here we go with a, um, a dashboard that uh, most people are very familiar with. And this is, again, our eyes on the journey. How are the users engaging with the offer page? And so we're, we're able to see in this particular instance that users are actually going through the funnel quite well. We actually have a promotion going on right now, and this is the final day. So people are scrambling to go through um, right now. And so they are going through a lot um, higher than what they had been before, and which is fantastic. But if the marketing department saw that one of these were not where it should be, like let's say this one right here was like the introduce, because introduce, we see that it's 10 seconds on the page. And so what that means is if this one was not hitting its goal, think of the context for like an ads manager. So if you're an ads manager or sending traffic or email or whatever affiliate, and you're trying to see if the users are even hanging out on the page for 10 seconds, if they weren't, you would know that there's something wrong with whatever they were expecting to see and what they did see. For example, like if you think of yourself in a real world, you're like, mm, okay, I'm looking for a coffee shop, but you go in a, into a store and it's actually a shoe store immediately. Before you even, if you have your eyes closed and you're just smelling, you're gonna know you're not in a coffee shop and you're in a shoe store. And same thing with this, with each online marketing, you're gonna know very quickly if you're in the right spot or wrong spot. You know, so that's one way that we can identify possibly which traffic sources are the ones not um, or which ads may not be hitting or setting the expectation properly. And we can go through and adjust those really quickly. Um, same thing for different traffic sources. If they're not coming down in um, viewing the call to action, it might be because they're not quite ready to see that or they need a little bit more nurturing and all kind of other different things that we could use with our marketing. Um, to guide them so they can know exactly where to optimize. There is no guessing. They're going to be able to know if they make this adjustment, they'll be able to predict what the results is going to be with that kind of thinking back to our framework. It's no more marketing in the blind. They have, you know, at, they're able to take action on their dashboard because they can see what's working, what's not. And we're looking at this very particular data set really quickly, you're able to see, oh, in this instance, this is what's not working. Something's going on here. Marketing team, let's go figure it out. And so again, know exactly where they're, where it's not working. If we were to go back into our ACE results here, and we were to change the same date range, Monday and Tuesday, let's see what our, our ACE results goes through and tells us here as well. And we actually have a different cart page too. So we're going to have to actually, it's our, um, 
yeah, they added a different cart page yesterday. Um, so it's not going to have that new data and, um, and actually just went through this morning. Um, so the Google Analytics 4 is not gonna have that quite yet. But if we were wanting to see this inside of Google Analytics 4, we will see everything flowing through here as well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and jump to the final little thing that I was gonna show you real quick. Um, again, for the eyes on the journey, for those of you that are wondering like, well, how the heck did you do that? Again, it's very simple. Just deciding what you want to name it and deciding when you want it to send it and boom, you're done. Um, coming back over to our events, that's what you're seeing here. And we're able to use those inside of Luger Studio or use those inside of Explorations and all of that. So we're going to go ahead and hop back. I want to show you some cheat sheet slides ahead. Um, and so I do have a short link that'll provide in just a moment that you'll be able to have these slides because I wanted you guys to have something where you can refer to. So again, we go to our configuration or configure events. You're going to create that event. You're going to choose to create. And then here you go. This is what the product name is and where. And then you have, again, event name equals to page view because we're saying, go tell me when there's a page view and then go look at that page location and when it contains whatever your the value is here and you're good. Again, you didn't need Tag Manager for this. Um, obviously, we recommend you do, but you don't have to. And then here we go. Again, product engaged. These are all cheat sheets for you. And then again with complete. And then if you're wanting to use Tag Manager, we just, here you go. And the product name aware and there's kind of whatever triggering mechanism you want to use. So now what? What do you do now? Now that you know what you're able to do with the ACE results, you can go ahead and also get a free course and tools with uh, this little short link, measuremarketing.io slash GA forward or this QR code. So uh, remember the measurement marketing framework that I mentioned at the very, very beginning. Um, and I've told you like, that's like usually the key that so many marketers are missing. They're missing that structure. They're always kind of marketing in the blind. It's chaotic marketing. That's the free course. Um, so you can go to this link, um, choose to do the free membership option. And the course is back there in a membership site free. Um, and so you guys can have that if you wanted to learn more about that framework. And thank you very much for putting it into the chat. And so are you ready to ace GA4? And here are all of the contact ways for us. So thank you very much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Um, and so that you can always submit, uh, email me at juliameasurementmarketing.io. Obviously, I'm at measurementmarketing.io. Um, and also Measure Summit. Um, so that's another one we've spoken at Measure Summit. I've been behind the scenes with Measure Summit with Mercer and Julian um, since 2020. And so we know all about all of that fun stuff. Um, and uh, you can find us on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. And then obviously here's that link again for the QR code as well as uh, measuremarketing.io slash GA4, GA forward and the link for the... Um, slides is measure.tips slash GA forward. 